Hello everyone, and from me at Drake Wing Gaming, let me just say, Happy Halloween to everyone. Thank you guys so much for everything. Please enjoy your Halloween and enjoy this new intro. And you know what? Even if it's not Halloween, enjoy Halloween anyway. Happy Halloween, guys. I love you. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with a Let's Play episode of Fatal Force, Tragedy of the Lone Wolf Arc. And uh, I'm happy to announce that as of recording this video, I am only 8 subs away from being a certified content creator on YouTube. There's not many of us in the furry fandom that are certified content creators for this platform, and hopefully, you know, hopefully I can help give a uh, furry community in general a more positive vibe, you know. But anyway, guys, let's see. What is in store for us today in this wacky game? Ah, uh, yes. Back in my room with Zero posing as the Mona Lisa. The weird stuff going on. Anyway, let's get into it, guys. <clears throat> Alright. Why? Are you just being stingy not teaching me because you're scared I might be better than you? Hmm? I wanted to try teasing him back with a smile, though he just rolled his eyes. You probably still can't even if I actually teach you. Unless you've seen... that. That? He's always weirdly vague about his, his words again. That? What is, he, what is he trying to imply here? Well, it's hard to explain because it's my first time I've ever seen that. I just kind of knew how to do it. It's like when you see a magic apple. When you eat it, the whole weight of the universe's knowledge enters your head. He continues to explain further with a confident smile, but I can pretty much tell that it's going to be a lie. He really thinks I'm dumb enough to not notice that he's just ripping off of things off of things from the anime Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> Great anime, by the way. Um, Brotherhood is better. In my opinion. I decided to try to test him by giving off some blatant keywords. Let me guess. After you see that door, you suddenly know everything and can make magic by clapping your hand. Yeah, precisely. Damn it, I knew it. He really is making fun of me right now. I grunted at him. I swear he enjoys teasing me far too much, and I can't and can't ever take me seriously, damn it. Honestly, I don't exactly have a much better explanation of how I know. I just do. He suddenly turned away from me and started speaking to me with a more downed voice. Dang it, now I'm starting to feel guilty again. The first one who noticed this enchantment was my teacher. Around that time, I was still learning and refining my combat skills with Mickey back in the U.S. Rangers. I kind of just played around until one day it just happened when I said the word. My teacher told me that the, that the enchantment came from the hidden world and is already forbidden to be used. Forbidden? Why? Honestly, not sure, but my teacher had told me that it uses a lot of life force. It could very easily end your life if you're not careful with it. A cold shock shut down my spine. He isn't kidding with me, is he? No, he probably isn't. He really is telling the truth. I walk up close. I walk closer up to Draviar and take a deep look at his face. He didn't crack a smile, and I could kind of feel a pretty strong vibe at this time. He's telling the truth. So, can Mickey and Zero use this enchantment? Nope. Not as I know of. Mickey does have a really good aim, though. At least he can ding a target with a knife from a kilometer away. Wait, what? What? What the? What? He can throw a knife over a mile away? <laughs> and if he has a gun, he's practically unstoppable. Well, no shit! If he can hit a target with a fucking knife from about a, over a mile away, yeah. Damn. Never thought a pervert like him could have supernatural aim. I'm impressed. And as for Zero? Well, I mean, I guess he's just good at fooling people. Well, yeah, I figured that out already. <laughs> I look over in Zero and... Oh, he's already fallen asleep while still wearing that picture frame. I mean, he is kind of adorable. So, the enchantment is still a mystery, huh? I mean, sure, you could say that. He looked back at me with a slight smile on his face. So, you said that the enchantment came from the hidden world. Do you have any plans to investigate it some, to investigate it some more? Huh? You're kidding. Boy, there aren't any guides. There isn't even any proof or evidence in any book of the place even existing. The only things about it that do exist is that it's incredibly dangerous to visit. It's not some place where we can just dilly-dally into like it's a holiday vacation. His face turned incredibly stern, 
Seems that he's actually done some research into this hidden world, or at least tried to find as much as he could. He seems rather determined about it. So, this hidden world, does it have a name? Javier nodded calmly. Some folks claim the place is a monster's lair. But I did hear some rumors. Uh, I did hear some rumors that my yawn would interrupt this sentence. Okay. But I did hear some rumors of a name that people keep calling it and are too afraid to go near it. They call it the Land of the Wolves. He continued to give me even deeper explanations of what the place is like. Judging by his face again, he seems pretty serious about the whole thing. So, like, is the Land of the Wolves a beastman? Lair? He stared at me for a moment, silent, as I was awaiting for a response. Nah, I'm just joking around. Let's forget about that. Okay, what now? Now what is he lying about? And why so suddenly? Like, does he just want to avoid the subject? I mean, obviously. He started to make a nervous face and pretend to be busy staring at something on my desk. I'm really glad no one's here, otherwise it'd be chaos. Large black wolf beast breaks into the college student's hostel. I'd probably go right onto the front page of the news. But anyway, still. Why? I continue to fool around with me if he really wants to help me since the beginning. Oh, this is really interesting. I look up. He was holding something that he found on my desk, chuckling lightly. Seems to be a trophy. I won that at one of the previous tournament and my college chess tournaments. He sniffed the trophy. It, tr Javier? Despite my head still spinning a bit, I gathered my courage to talk with him again. He, yes. He looked at me while still holding the trophy. I still don't get it. Why do you keep fooling around with me? He seemed to be a bit puzzled by my question. You gotta be careful when you ask something. The wrong questions will give you the wrong answers, Nary. He smirked and then continued looking at the trophy. It honestly looks more, looks more like he's just pretending to look at it. Then why do you keep on hiding something from me? Like, seriously, do you think I haven't noticed anything yet? First off, you bring me to your home, knowing I was bitten by that damn werewolf. And then the first morning I'm awake, you give me a blindfold for me to wear on my way to school. And then Mickey randomly makes a ridiculous speech? I was roaring. I really couldn't help, I really couldn't keep my patience anymore. Nary, calm down, please. He replied with a worried expression on his face. Are you kidding? How can I be calm over something like this? You didn't even answer my question. Instead, you just keep throwing around your stupid jokes. You even promised to give me an explanation. My voice was thundering. I really don't know why I can't control my anger at all right now. Javier froze for a while, still probably trying to figure out how to respond back. He took a small breath and walked back over to my desk to put back the trophy. I probably hollered so loud I might have woken up Zero. I took a glance back at him. Nope. He's still sound asleep. He must not really notice. I'm... I'm sorry. He started staring off into the distance out the window. I really mean it, Nary. I guess I'm just... I don't know. A bit too excited? <laughs> he smiled wryly. I'm kind of shocked. I'm supposed to be the one that should be excited. Because here I am, meeting a beast man, werewolf, a nice one at that, and a real one. Not just some dude in a fursuit. On the contrary, I mean, surely he's dealt with plenty of humans before already. I mean, he lives in a world that's dominated by them. Maybe for all this time, he was just lonely? But what about Mickey and Zero? They've always been at his side. On the night when you were attacked, I noticed something. On a typical basis, a wild werewolf would instantly kill its victims and eat them without hesitation. In your case, though, it just bit you. He continued to stare out the window. Wait, how did you know? He didn't look at me. I walk up closer to him. Well, I'm a wolf. I just know this by nature. Based on the injury, there were signs of you struggling with the werewolf trying to get it off. But usually when someone struggles to fight off an animal after being bitten, then the cut just becomes deeper. Good lord, how much does this wolf know? First he tends my wounds, makes me breakfast, and now he can perform autopsies? Actually, hang on. I've just noticed something about him. He reminds me of how Gwen kept on mentioning to beware of something. Neri, I would like to say that not only are you going to become a dangerous being yourself, but you're also in danger. He turned and stared at me sternly. What? I'm in danger as well? Are you telling me there's some hunter or some kind or some kind who's coming to try and kill me? Is there a hunter at my college? I balled up on the floor. Why must life turn to this? Actually, no. 
There aren't any hunters here, so long as I'm with you and you're within my territory. He laid his hand on my forehead. What do you mean by your territory, exactly? My head was feeling pretty heavy. Is his hand really that heavy or what? Well, a lot of the information is classified, though I can try to make it as easy as I can for you to understand. In short, we make agreements with some people, and as long as our purpose is served, they won't send any hunter to our area. What happened to you was just one part of our mission to... Capture that werewolf? He froze for just a moment, shocked. Ha! Huh, just as I thought. That was the real plan. He relaxed and chuckled. He lifted his hand off my head and looked at me with a gentle smile. 100 marks for you! What made you figure it out? He scratched the chin of his muzzle, thinking. Mickey's speech. It was to provoke it, right? I pretty much knew at the moment when Gwen was talking about it. I wasn't fully aware, I wasn't fully sure about it up until Dravia revealed a little bit more information about it. Though, something still feels a bit off about it. Exactly. Did you figure out why, did you figure out why today we only did it for seniors? I know the answer. Surely it must be. Dravyar was stunned and then gave me a really big grin. Well, well, another 100 marks for you. He brushed my head with his huge hand again. Then, how did you know that it came from here? Do, do, do you guys get it sent here? I looked straight at him, just to make sure he wasn't going to fool around with me again. Simple, because you were the first victim. My eyes opened a little bit wider. He stopped brushing my head. Wait, what? I'm the first victim? How come? Okay, this situation was getting weirder than I thought. I mean, let me ask you. Have you heard or seen of any recent news regarding to some random massacre or nasty murder around your area? No, right? Then there's one more thing that I'm pretty certain of, and it's that the route that you used to get back to this hostel. You typically cross the route during the nighttime and rain. It's extremely risky given the majority of the area is peppered with abandoned construction sites. Oh, I see now. So you're saying that... Most students don't know of this route, let alone dare it. Only the most experienced do, which rules out the younger class years, or almost anyone for that matter. He smiled again and nodded. He even patted my head like a dog. Atta boy, another 100 marks for you. Gotta say, you're very smart. I'm really impressed, even though you don't get the you don't have the best temper. He chuckled for a moment. He stopped patting my head and just started to focus on my face. Oh jeez, I'm starting to blush again. I don't know why, but somehow, just the way he's looking at me, it almost gives me this sad vibe. Time feels frozen. I could kind of start hearing a sad melody playing in my head. Should... Dravio? No, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, don't worry about it, Nary. As long as I'm here, you're going to be fine. I'll protect you. He crooned at me. He gave me a really warm feeling. But why? Why do you want to protect me so much? I'm just an outsider. I was still puzzled. He closed his eyes and looked away. I could see a small tear being shed. Javier, are you alright? I get close and he wipes the tear off gently from his eye. He began to calm himself slowly. Oh, wow. <laughs> Mickey really does take his time, doesn't he? Huh, I've almost forgotten about him. I wonder, where is he anyways? The last time I saw him was the speech. After that, he just disappeared almost without a trace. Javier got up and suddenly strutted towards the door and opened it. Up oh, there he is. I was stunned. Mickey's just there, standing in front of the doorway with his fist up as if he was ready to knock on it, but Javier already opened it. Gah, I hate this job. Hey, at least you did find something. Javier smiled. He escorted Mickey into my room. Hey, kiddo. <clears throat> I'll try that again. Heh. <laughs> Hey, kiddo, you enjoying my awesome speech? He made a goofy grin. I kind of don't want to answer that question. Actually, it was, uh... It was... Terrible! So damn terrible! I'd rather choose to die first than keep on hearing it! He hollered and passed out again. Good lord, that was extremely unexpected. I might get a heart attack if he keeps on suddenly barking like that. He's such a weird little one. Mickey didn't seem that nudged over that much. He's probably already used to Zero being like that. Huh. Kinda rare to see him wake up with his old identity. Old identity? What does he mean by that? Mickey got close to Zero and lifted him onto, the, onto my bed so he could sleep properly. 
Javier stood in front of Mickey. Seems he was waiting for something. Here. Mickey gave something to Javier. Javier put it up to his snout and sniffed it. Ah, a bullet. Silver bullet. He then showed it to me. A bullet? On the night of that attack. <clears throat> on the night of that attack, Mickey somehow managed to shoot that werewolf. I mean, technically, I kind of missed it a bit. Regardless, your ability to have extremely quick aiming still impresses me, Mickey. You have your smirked at Mickey. Mickey just looked away. He blushed. So, this bullet must still hold the scent of the, from the werewolf that Mickey shot. So that means... That it's pretty much confirmed that the werewolf is from this area. Though, we'll first need to capture it. Then we'll make a judgment. He explained it to me. I'm now a lot more sure this time that I will get to know who it is soon. There is something you all need to be worried of more than this werewolf issue, by the way. Mickey stood up from the bed slowly, avoiding waking up Zero. I need to show you something that I just found. Mickey looked at Javier with a stern face. Javier only nodded in silence. I think you should stay here with Zero. I need to check on something. N no, I want to come too, please. I stared at Javier and hoped that he'd approve. But this might be well too much for you. Just bring him along, Javier. He also deserves to know. Javier sighed. He looked very worried. Don't worry about me, Javier. I'll be able to handle it, alright? Besides, I'm already a werewolf. What worse can really happen to me anyways? Uh, you could fucking die. Javier looked at me for a moment, before silently nodding and smiling at me. Very well, then. Let's go. We'll leave Zero here for now. He'll be just fine. I mean, it's not like it's gonna take us too long to get there anyways. There? I look up at Mickey, who is already making his way out the, out the door. Yeah, the cafeteria. Huh? What did Mickey find at the cafeteria? Without much, without much time, the three of us made our way to, out of the hostel and back to the academy. It's a cafeteria located... The cafeteria is located in the main building, and it only took around seven minutes to arrive there. I kept on looking around while the three of us were walking. Not a single soul seemed to be around at this hour. Not even the security guards were around, apparently. Did you put an enchantment on this place, Draviar? I don't see anyone here for some reason. Yep, I put it on the moment we stepped out of your room. But it won't last for long. We gotta hurry up. How long? Mickey was already starting to stride ahead of us. Mmm, less than, like, 30 minutes, I think. Well, hurry up, then, before time runs out. I can hear some of the growling undertones again in his voice. What happened to the cafeteria, anyways? We finally arrived in the cafeteria. Still open, but again, completely desolate. Wow, Driver's enchantment is pretty damn impressive. Mickey pointed at the location. There was another room behind the cafeteria, the kitchen. I tracked a bullet here in this kitchen, but I found something else disturbing to me in it. He kept on pointing at the room. Driver stepped up to it and rattled the door handle. Locked. Ooh. Javier began to focus at the door and started to growl under his voice. By the prayer upon the secret technique are of the wolves. Zevolono! He knocked against the door, but by magic the plain door turned into something pretty damn hideous. It looks like it comes from a horror film. Silent Hill. He pulled the door open. Ugh! Ugh! Don't get near it. Mickey grabbed me by the wrist and pulled me back. I could vaguely make out what was inside the room. It was a complete mess. Red liquid splattered everywhere. It was a small box. Javier walked up to the box and opened it. Hmm. Seems to still be fresh. I could still sense the blood flowing through the veins inside the flesh. Poor girl. Huh? Girl? Without a second thought, I free myself from Mickey and step into the room to see what it was. Oh dear God. Never in my life would I actually ever think to witness something that like that in real life. I've only seen it in movies. Human flesh, cut into pieces. And then I see the head, floating. I recognize it. That's not possible. I just met her this morning and now she's completely mutilated. I can feel a sudden force pressed up against, pressed up my, on my throat. I can't stand looking at it any longer. I bolt out of the room and throw up. It seems that you recognize her, Nary. Of course I know who it is. It's just hard to believe. I hold my breath to stop myself from puking any further. 
She was so energetic just this morning. And now she's completely lifeless. Murdered by a werewolf? That's Jennifer! It seems then that this is getting far more complicated than handling an ordinary wild werewolf. What, what, what do you mean? It means that you're in for more, for far more danger since something else is actually involved here. Fear struck hard into my mind. I can see my hands trembling. Wait, 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 wait. There's more there's more than one werewolf at this place? Wow, a werewolf cutting his meal up before consuming. How incredibly rare. Or, well, I mean, we also do that, but not with human flesh and with some more decency. He smirked. It's not a werewolf. Jarver looked at me. His face made it feel like my death day was tomorrow. Time just about felt like it had grinded to a halt. None of us had anything more to say for a while. We were still standing in front of the massacre room. The, the, who who are, or what are we dealing with? Draviar took a small breath and uttered something that I was about to make that was about to make me regret asking. It would be would be, would be about to send me into my next nightmare. No no alarm chain. I want to hear this. I want to hear this. Oh shit! A Wendigo. Wendigo. Yep, saving it right there. Oh shit! We got a werewolf and a Wendigo at this college. Holy hell! Oh, guys, that reminds me. In a few days, I'm going to go see Antlers in theaters. Um, if you guys like horror movies, I encourage you to go see it and support it. Um, Guillermo del Toro is part of it, and it looks like it's going to be a bloody good time. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been a mysterious, gruesome episode, and a little bit silly episode of Fatal Force. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!